Well, it's time, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Jurassic World Evolution 2 is finally here. At least it will be on November 9th, 2021, as we take our first look, as courtesy of the wonderful developers, Frontier has allowed us to get early access earlier on the channel. You probably saw the story campaign, and or maybe will soon, and also the story for Chaos Theory. We've also been doing some live streams on the channel too, so make sure you check it out after subscribing for all things challenge and sandbox and the database and so much to learn, so much to explore and unlock and discover. It's fantastic. Well, today we're going to take our first look at building the ultimate park. Customize your experience from altering the economy to how dinosaurs behave. It's all in your hands. The challenge mode is kind of similar to this, but sandbox is really just kind of your fun building mode and earn money and build whatever you'd like and design the park of your dreams and of course challenge mode is essentially the same but with just different parameters if you're familiar with planet zoo and planet coaster there's a little bit of a difference and of course sandbox is more free but challenge makes you more creative by restricting you in certain ways that make you solve creative uh, problems economically uh, anyway without further ado we're going to jump into our sandbox mode here today and take a brief look at the challenge mode in sandbox and uh both of these together should be quite good make sure you check out the channel for all the live streams giveaways and more and of course join the discord down below and there's also the campaign playthroughs don't miss them they're all good now welcome everybody to jurassic world evolution 2 let's go so right off the bat, we see that many other maps can be unlocked, more than likely by playing through all the uh, different challenge scenarios, as it says here, three stars and challenge for Germany. So there's different types of uh, terrain, including temperate and Tiaga, alpine, deserts, and tropical, and many different locations. So we've got Isle Nublar, Site A and B in San Diego, and the 93 map, and uh, the deserts of North America. Also looks like we got the UK here too. So lots of cool locations to unlock. We'll have to start with Canada then for today's purposes. And we'll unlock more of these through the challenge mode. Let's go. Jumping over to challenge mode to take a brief look at what they've got there. We've got Canada, Germany, the UK, and North and Southwest United States. Which have different types of uh, parameters to complete. And rewards to unlock by completing those. The buildable area is medium. And it uh, looks like there'll be different sizes based on where we choose to build. But, uh, yeah, we'll have to start in order. So the challenge mode then unlocks more for the sandbox mode and all kind of links together in a really fun way. Also, the uh, campaign and chaos theory modes allow you to unlock more in the database. So that's good for those of you who like to know more and also uh, look at everything, including the dinosaurs and the facilities. All right, well, time to start our park in Canada, bud. Let's go. Now, this is very nice. It looks like we can actually choose Jurassic World staff or park uh, staff and guests. And we can also do guests only, Jurassic Park staff, etc., etc. So we can create what kind of a park we want. Like, for example, the Site B in Jurassic Park is basically where they created the dinosaurs. So we could go for Jurassic Park staff and make it like a research center. Or we could make it a public park for guests only or a mix of both or uh, dinosaur protection workers. Basically the skins of who's going to visit and kind of creating our own lore for our park. So it, it, this is kind of a creative mode that breaks it all the way down. We can do our standard mode and our custom mode too. So there's many different uh, options that we can turn on and off. So if we want to go for just building a beautiful park, we can turn off all the things that might hinder that. So we can focus solely on building or we can make it very realistic and go back over to our uh, standard mode, which then basically makes it more realistic and uh, that's something I'm interested in as well. Well, I think I'm going to go for the Jurassic Park staff and guests because I'm a bigger fan of the original. But, of course, we got all of our options here, too, so that's pretty cool. We also have our Jurassic World, Jurassic Park buildings. Or you can do all buildings so you can pick and choose between the both. And uh, that's that's kind of nice, actually. So let's go ahead and start our standard mode, all buildings, etc., etc. Or maybe we should go into creative mode. Yeah, I think we'll go into creative just so we can see more buildings. Let's do it. Ooh. Canada, bud. Very nice. All right, so just so you're aware, the Canadian map that's available in the challenge mode is the same in sandbox mode. And in order to unlock the different sandbox mode maps that we've seen, we'll have to do well in the challenge mode too. So the game really seems to be uh, the end game here at the sandbox mode where it is absolutely 
beautiful. So I would recommend then playing the campaign, playing through the chaos theory, playing through the challenge mode, and then eventually playing here. You could maybe skip the uh, chaos theory mode as kind of a middle mode to jump back and forth. Uh, but you will need that for unlocking a ton of stuff and uh, doing research in the sandbox mode too. And also the maps. Gorgeous stuff. Gorgeous. Absolutely wonderful. All right, well, uh, we're going to jump into a time-lapse mode then and try to build uh, some wonderful enclosures probably up here and around some of the other areas by the water. And it looks like we can build on the shoreline too. So, of course, we can have some giant uh, creatures down here by the water. If we wanted to, we could probably connect these together uh, with a uh, um, probably like a little terraforming there or just extend the lake and, and make our own thing we can even uh, try to recreate the one from uh lost world as close as we can in this territory if we take a look at the map too you can see how much we can build in now keep in mind this is a medium sized map and they start us out kind of easy with that but they'll get a little bit bigger as we go on i think maps like germany might be a little larger or maybe medium as well the uk map will probably be smaller and then the other north american maps will be uh, bigger as well but that's not always better it always is uh, coming down to terrain and whatever you want to build in your park. You can bulldoze everything and leave it flat, too. All right, let's jump in to some time lapse. All right, time to get cracking. So all that experience from games like Planet Coaster and Planet Zoo will be used here in the sandbox mode in order to eh, try to use as much as you can. Uh, you can really do the sandbox mode from the start and come back later. I may have mentioned that a few times, and that's kind of one of the things that I've been doing in this game is jumping back and forth between campaign, chaos mode, challenge mode, and then this sandbox mode. It's really nice because when you unlock new stuff, of course, you get to use it in sandbox mode. And that's kind of the ultimate mode to take all the things that you've learned and all the things that you've unlocked and put it into what would be like your kind of uh, final experience, your, your big final crescendo as everything uh, that you've learned and, and uh, that you've researched is then available for you here to put in your park and many different parks. Not just this Canadian park, but of course, the other ones that I mentioned too will be unlocked over time. And in my opinion, that's kind of restrictive because really one of the things you want to do at the very start is jump in and see everything for yourself. And it takes a long time, just like it did in the previous game, to really get a sense of what's what and how it operates and how to achieve it. And uh, of course, that's a big part of Jurassic Park and Jurassic World is incubating the dinosaurs and waiting to go find the DNA and bringing all that back to extract it and then create those genomes. And that is a very long waiting process of constantly, continuously stepping up and improving your park. And that's what you'll be doing, too, when you unlock things and come back time to time. Uh, but it's definitely a game that if you sit in one area for too long, it becomes very um, repetitive. And luckily, the campaign doesn't uh, take up too much time. and doesn't really have you do uh, too much that's uh, overly tedious by the time it's uh, you're thinking about going on to another level and what it might be. It's already over. So here we're setting up a main path, uh, which will be used from the visitor center here. We're using the Jurassic Park stuff from 93 for the most part, though. We can use any tile set uh, between the two, both Jurassic World and Jurassic Park, in order to design our park here. And the nice thing is, is that the uh, visitor center is really just like a, be a beautiful centerpiece. The innovation center is very nice, too. Very tall and open space. But this one always just, uh, I don't know, this is the true... Uh, Jurassic Park to me. I wish they would have kept that building in the movies, but it's it's totally understandable that they made all sorts of new stuff, and it looks great too. Uh, the Innovation Center versus the Visitor Center, but yeah, you can see a peak all the way down. When you walk out of the Visitor Center, you can walk all the way down to the water, where there'll be a helipad then to bring people in. Coming up with different ideas to try to give everyone a uh, look at the park. Not only are we trying to design a space to maximize uh, the people's ability to view the paddocks and the enclosures and the lagoons and the aviaries. But also, of course, there's amenities too, and people may be staying here in hotels, so you want to make a nice central main street for everyone to go to and uh, to be able to see and, and to go eat and such. And there's important things like the shelters and the restrooms and, uh, of course, other uh, different types of decorations that you can put down. It's a little finicky to do. One of my complaints uh, about Frontier Games is that sometimes the pathing can be difficult to do, and that's true of Planet Coaster and Planet Zoo. For myself, anyway, other people might have a, a breeze with it, but uh, for me, one of the more difficult things to do is to put down uh, pathways, and here with the decorations, uh, there's not really a way to perfectly guide it in, so it just takes a, a little bit of extra time and a uh, precise hand in order to really get it into place for each one of these uh, pieces in the main street. 
And luckily, we're not talking about something along the lines of uh, Planet Zoo where you're building a, a massive park and a massive food court. Uh, and it's the same with Planet Coaster where a lot of outdoor areas, which I would like to see here, by the way, are not necessarily in this game. There are restaurants and you can customize them and you can build bigger ones and you can designate them either uh, to be like a salad bar or an, uh, maybe a Korean barbecue. Uh, but for the most part, uh, the buildings are just kind of food, shopping and whatnot. And you place them uh, within a certain distance of different uh, locations in the park. It's really like when you place bathrooms in... Uh, maybe Parkitect or Planet Coaster 2, where you might not always put them into uh, a large food court area or near one, but you'll just place them indiscriminately across the entire park based on distance or uh, more of where the crowd is. Now, crowding is a thing in this game, too, and it seems like there's um, groups that will come in. People will hang out together. Not everybody's an individual, but I haven't seen the ability to find out uh, anything about the guests yet. Uh, you can attract different types of guests, such as... Uh, luxury guests or adventure guests or uh, I think educational guests but uh, there's no way to really tell who they are if you click on them you can't tell who's coming into the park and so it sometimes makes it a little more difficult to accommodate for them because as you know if you're building in your sandbox park you want to try to make something for everybody but to find out where they're going might be a little hard to track so this is our uh, staff area everything here in this gray area will be kind of more of uh, the park operations, things that you don't necessarily want the guests to see that they might not be able to, or that would be a restricted area. And I don't think there's a way in the game as of yet, or that I found, uh, to restrict people from going to certain areas of the park where you still want your staff to be connected. And uh, of course, for the game's rules, everything does have to kind of be connected back to the main entry or the arrival point. Uh, even including your uh, hatcheries and such still need to be connected even though uh, they could somewhat be isolated. So we're building a lot of the required buildings here that are necessary in this game, including the medical unit and the, um, the response unit and the staff room and such to keep everybody happy. And that also extends the amount of uh, scientists that you can have that really is helpful in the field. You'll usually end up having maybe on occasion two people working a research project and so when you start with two scientists you'll eventually work your way up to maybe eight or more so lots of good work being done on the main entrance here going back and forth and just coming up with ideas from previous parks that i've designed previous ex uh, explorations in planet zoo and planet coaster a lot of good things going on here though i i must say i do like the larger facility buildings and I think they look really great with the amount of detail on them. One thing I would just wish I could do is more detail for the actual uh, buildings that operate the park versus just the uh, the amenities for the, uh, the guests. There also are uh, different size hotels. And of course, you can pick the two different hotels between Jurassic World and Jurassic Park. So you can kind of get a different uh, look to them. Although the Jurassic, um, aside from the main visitor center, not too many things look like they're made of thatch. So they kind of have that tan and, and wood color. Um, some of the more modern Jurassic World buildings definitely have that darker wood color. And so they blend together well. The Jurassic Park and the Jurassic World buildings can go together quite nicely. So if you're trying to make a sandbox park that looks good, you can definitely fit in all the styles and try to customize everything pretty in depth. Now, unfortunately, in this uh, recording, we won't see a lot of the uh, customization of the amenities. But it is quite nice that you can change things like their... Um, facade in the front you can also change the roof style and even what the building is uh, you can well kind of like you can make it a donut shop or an ice cream shop and then research more things more amenities for all of the guests too and that's one of the things that you'll be placing down in almost every park is a science center that's used for your researching and for your extraction of the dna from dinos once you've basically brought them back from the wild and so um you know the science center i feel is a large bottleneck for a lot of this game too where if scientists become overworked they have to go to the staff center you can basically pay them a little bit of a bonus and they'll go chill out for a while and then eventually can uh, go back to doing work of research uh, of a disease or going and uh, exploring or, or wrangling some dinosaurs and uh, doing expedition stuff bringing it back to your park but one of the things is that everything has to be researched through that science center. So if you're researching a guest amenity, 
let's say, for example, you're working... In fact, let's change it and say that you're working on uh, a hatchery for your lagoon. Uh, you have to research that separately than a upgrade for your ranger station to add an extra vehicle. And some of the things in the campaign kind of make me think, okay, so you have to, you know, you have to research a storm uh, shelter before you research a, um, a vehicle, right? So before you can actually purchase another uh, ranger vehicle, you have to do uh, several other things that aren't really related to it, but are somewhat associated with the ranger uh, vehicles. So it can be kind of a little confusing and whatnot to have a more linear research pattern than uh, random research patterns or things that you choose based on categories. All right, so we're adding some of the amenities now. So this will be uh, some sushi shop here. And you can see the different things we can customize inside to attract different clientele. Things like music or aquariums. Uh, I think you can see it from the outside. And a lot of the buildings, when you peek into them through the windows, you can actually see walls and windows and uh, bulletin boards and such. So there's a lot of care being able to look into a building. In Planet Zoo, you can actually clip through a lot of the veterinarian buildings and see microscopes and equipment sitting on tables and jars and whatnot. And in this one, you can't necessarily clip into a building, which is, well, it makes sense. You know, you shouldn't be able to just, like, face through the wall. But you can definitely see something on the inside, though not any activity or whatnot. The game also has a constant day-night cycle, so we'll be seeing that a lot, too. And, you, of course, you can pause, but then a building must be constructed live. Well, there we go. More decorations going on. Yeah, so if, uh, if you're going to place a building down and want to see it constructed, you do need to actually have the building uh, construct. So you have to have it on pause, so that way it can uh, uh, actually build in real time. Doing some lighting here, kind of hard to get everything uh, straight and narrow down the middle. There are also the ability to, uh, for what you saw on the left and right side of those shops, you can also change the entryway of the shops to have trees or lights or benches. And so everything can look a little different or the same if you want to decorate your area with a certain theme, which is tidying up here around the uh, around the lake a little bit. And uh, I really am proud of the uh, I just kind of did this randomly and it turned out nicely to have the uh, helicopter off to the side. And the game looks beautiful at nighttime. Uh, so as I mentioned before about the day night cycle, there is a day night cycle, but you can't really control it. You can't, uh, you know, make it daytime when you want or nighttime when you want. So if you're looking to make a screenshot, and I haven't seen this yet in the capture mode, there's a photo mode, which every game really should have, and this one's got one, so that's great. Uh, photo mode to be able to see all the, uh, you know, the um, dinosaurs up close or to take a picture of uh, uh, maybe a bunch of guests or something coming into the park or a beautiful building that you made. But I don't think there's an option to be able to adjust the time both in sandbox mode or in capture mode. Now, uh, the park um, doesn't really change at night. Uh, people are still here at nighttime. I don't. I don't think any anybody leaves when it closes at nighttime. The park is either open or closed. There's, I guess, no daylights. Uh, what would you call it? Hours. I was trying to think of what I was trying to say there. Yeah, there's no hours of operation. Your park is either open or your park is closed. And it's dictated by whether or not you turn it on. So it's really like a faucet. Are you allowing guests in or are you not? And if you turn it off, then they, of course, leave. And that's not something you want, too, because it takes quite a long time to get all those guests back. Now, another thing here, too, is that we're building a lot of these generator buildings. Until we've researched some more of the power units, we have to use all these basic uh, generators in order to power the park. We don't get any sort of solar panels or a uh, kind of an on-site uh, generation unit until a little bit later. We have to research it, and I don't know if we can actually do that in Sandbox. You would imagine, though, that, um, I, and I just don't think it's possible, but it definitely should be. If you could go into Sandbox mode with unlimited funds and just sit there and wait for each piece of research to be done, it really should just be auto-unlocked. I think it would be a much better experience to allow a lot of people to learn on their own by just making mistakes and just goofing around and, and seeing how everything works on their own. You know, just giving somebody a bunch of uh, colors and a blank canvas to do whatever they want. We'll eventually let them learn blending and whatnot on their own if we were talking about art. So allowing people to come in here and make mistakes and battle arenas and all the things that everybody, everyone will be doing for the first week when this releases on November 9th, it just makes sense. Or at least I think it should. 
Or at least I'd like to see it. The Chaos Theory mode and the uh, Campaign modes, again, are very good at uh, kind of really just being a campaign that's not too intense or arduous or boring. I think they keep it interesting. And it is nice to use this sandbox mode as kind of a reward for all the things that you've done. Uh, but I think the challenge mode is uh, even better than this mode too because it really, for my play style, makes me a lot better of a, of, uh, of a designer with a budget and a lot of uh, limitations that stop me from doing all the things that I want to do to uh, make the park without any restraints. So in this case, really our restrictions are the size of the park, you know, the, the park limits, and also maybe the terrain. You could, of course, bulldoze all this area and just make it flat and see how many dinosaurs you could fit in here. But, you know, it's still limited to the shape of the park. And the edges of the park are very flawless, too. All of the maps that i played so far, all the campaign maps and even this map, are very difficult to find out where the edge of the map is. They're, um, yeah, they do a great job of blending things together. And so it makes me want to see the maps get bigger. But again, remember, this game is going to have to be sold on Xbox and on uh, PlayStation as well. So the console version and the PC version are kind of being made so that way they can match each other. This was one of the big complaints when Planet Coaster came out for uh, PlayStation is that a lot of people were not happy that there was a uh, kind of a more strict build limit. And that's more of a hardware limitation, not really a game limitation. Uh, it's more of the hardware limiting the game than the game just doing something wrong or being poorly designed. Uh, no matter what, there is a limitation, and especially in these types of builder games where you put things and how uh, densely you pack them. That's why we're not really seeing a lot of city builders on console games like uh, Planet Coaster and, uh, you know, I, I don't even think Planet Zoo or whatnot is on there. And if it is, there's probably limitations to that as well. But anyway, the sandbox mode looking good so far. Uh, again, a lot of those gray paths being put down in areas where, uh, you know, it's going to be staff only. And a lot of the uh, little amenities being put down and, yep, decorations with, um, you know, <laughs> with uh, all the uh, umbrellas and, and tables and cafes. Uh, this, again, is more of just like an experimentation to see what we can do and how much stuff we can fit in here. But uh, I've seen my populations of park guests so far get up to what seems to be maybe about mm, somewhere around just less than maybe 750. Uh, 500 to 750 people in the park. At least it looks like that by judging by the paths. And it's not been too overwhelming. You will hear some people complaining about paths being crowded, even though there's massive amounts of space between groups of people and everyone's slipping by, no problem. But there are wider paths than what we see here, too. So there's a lot of things to research in this game that make me think, like, wait a minute. We're synthesizing dinosaurs, but we don't know how to make a path from, like, four meters wide to six meters wide. We don't know how to add two meters to a uh, asphalt path. Hmm. So it's one of the, it's just some of those things where it's like, yeah, it's super fun to be able to research everything and to unlock new things and work and, uh, for goals and, and have that progression. But also, you know, it's always like, um, you know, when you want something now and you, you realize that it's, it, there's not a lot to be able to get it, you still got to spend $250,000 and have one of your scientists uh, spend like two or three hours researching a park bench or garbage cans or lights, which actually are things that I've not seen in this game. I've not seen... Uh, garbage cans and I've not seen lights there are kind of uh, banners that might have lights on them but I haven't seen anything that I can decorate in terms of a street light is what I mean there there are some lights you saw me put down earlier that are made of concrete but there's not necessarily um, you know uh, a ton of detail to it there certainly is a lot more than the previous game and I like where the game is going so far and I think the sandbox mode again is a great way to be able to uh, let loose and just see everything go full bore and this isn't really even like a review either. This is just kind of more of uh, my thoughts on what I've been thinking after my first couple of days of playing. And I, I see more good than, than bad here. And I definitely see a lot of potential to add more. And I think that's one of the things that always comes down to these building games, no matter what it is, is that there's always something to be added, always something to be fixed and improved. And of course, we're playing, as you've seen content creators this week, uh, before November 9th, everyone here is kind of playing an earlier access version too. That can, can be changed before a day or two before if someone finds a fatal um, crash or something that uh, continues to ruin their game. That can be patched out before launch, you know, if it's a rare thing like that. And that's another thing too, is that Discord and Steam are wonderful opportunities for us to share all of our feedback 
and uh, it would be good to be able to have workshop support speaking of those things here, and I, I just don't see it either. And it would be nice to see some prefab um, custom buildings made. Again, Planet Zoo, Planet Coaster, two very popular games where the uh, community's gone insane in making incredibly beautiful food courts and uh, you know buildings that are like uh, large pavilions or indoor areas that are just jam-packed with restaurants and things like that. And that's really where you're going to see a lot of the people in, in, especially in this type of game, you'll either see everybody in a uh, uh, kind of a viewing station or a tower or something like that. And, uh, you know, uh, either at a cafeteria or whatnot is somewhere else that you'd expect to see them. This intersection is not great. You'll be seeing me uh, adjusting this a few times. Later in the video, we will be putting some of the uh, dinosaurs in these paddocks too. I've got plans for uh, making a couple of holding cells holding cells i don't know what i mean by that um enclosures let's call them yeah uh usually when i say holding cell i mean an area where a uh, before i would always uh, make kind of like a hatchery building where it would then release into a blank field then you'd have uh, the trank helicopter come over tranquilize the uh, dinosaur and then put it into another paddock there's no need to do that here now but i will make like a control um enclosure that will then eventually uh, allow for all the dinosaurs to go over to the other enclosures so we should have like three for the herbivores and then a few for the larger carnivores that'll kind of link together it's always a good idea some of the herbivores in this game with 107 dinosaurs some of them still don't like each other they don't want to be near each other they don't want to bother each other but sometimes or most of the time uh like for example a Triceratops can be next to a, um, an Ankylosaurus, for example, and they don't get too mad at each other. So that's a good thing. Uh, they're both pretty docile, but you put too many, um, you know, too many animals in the same enclosure, and they might start getting stressed and attacking each other. And that's another thing to consider here too. Very nice snapping in this game as well. It does take a little bit of uh, getting used to, and it's not perfect in terms of making like perfect 90 degree angles or 45s. It doesn't really tell you what the angles are either, and I think that's for simplicity for younger kids. And another thing here, too, in this game, I've seen a lot of good challenge. I've uh, uh, seemingly failed missions that have just kind of ramped up in difficulty what seems to be out of nowhere. And I've had e even missions where, um, you know, some uh, there was a win parameter, a few win parameters where we should have won, and then just a quick reload then would uh, complete the scenario. Like, for example, a timer counting down saying, hey, have 80% of comfort for all of your dinosaurs in the park. And it would start to count down, and then one of the dinosaurs would, uh, in this case, die. They, they got into a fight, which is interesting because they were all comfortable. But then, um, you know, once the, uh, the, remo the removal of the, uh, the remains of the dinosaur were taken out of the enclosure... Uh, the, the countdown timer still stops. So there's a few weird things like that that probably happen from time to time. Really enjoying uh, leveling out the terrain, though. One, one of the things that's great here is the terrain editing really feels good, and the terrain itself looks really diverse without being bland. Like, everything here is flat, but it doesn't look unbelievable. It's definitely a nice uh, color. There's a variety in the soil. You have grass, and you have, uh, you know, a few other types of materials that... Um, really add diversity to the landscape. It's really nice. Okay. So we're now adding some more pathways to the visitor centers here. And later in the um, in the playthrough here, we've unlocked a lot more viewing stations and other things that can be used in the park, including uh, the ability to use the park tour. Now, if you play the Chaos Theory mission, the first one for Jurassic Park, the original, you'll be making that park tour rather quickly, uh, probably your third or fourth objective, and uh, then you'll have to have that go through all the paddocks. So, similar to how it is in the movies, and I can't remember how different this is from the original Jurassic World evolution, uh, you can, of course, have your uh, park vehicles go through those enclosures and then back out. And there's a lot of little options for like photo sections that add to your park rating or at least uh, guest excitement, which is part of that too. So you can see a lot of space here where we can't build on the very edge. A lot of this feels to be like they're making you respect the cliffs. Otherwise, everything would just kind of, <laughs> you would just flatten everything out and just make massive paddocks. And if you want to do the big battle arenas, you can do that too. It's quite easy to 
uh, flatten out an area and do that even with the restrictions of the size but it doesn't feel too restrictive it definitely is kind of annoying to hit the edge of the map when you had an idea to make a paddock a little different in shape but it's not too bad and especially since the dinosaurs don't need some of them uh, need a lot of space but most of them are pretty happy in areas of the size that you see here there's a lot of uh, variety that you can uh, squeeze out of every little inch of the of the map and it kind of prevents you from making those large like um, you know kilometer by kilometer square uh, enclosures that would just kind of be boring that would just be I don't know they would feel more like industrial or, or more like um, pens for cattle rather than dinosaurs and that's another thing too is that you want to make kind of longer a rectangular patter, uh, paddock if you can because you want people to be able to walk alongside it and uh, I'm not exactly sure if the walking next to the dinosaurs does anything I, I think it does but the viewing galleries are really what you want to do and it makes it a little easier the viewing galleries kind of work in like a almost uh, it's not necessarily 90 degrees in all directions but it's like a 45 degree angle and it makes it a lot easier to see those dinosaurs adding some more interesting areas here we're working on what I would suspect to be our Tyrannosaurus Rex uh, enclosure at some point. We do need to unlock some higher security fences. Those are not available at the moment. The gates, from what I've seen, always start on five. There, the, there's five security levels in the game, and the uh, security gates are five, which means that they can't be... Well, they're very, very difficult to destroy. That's a strong point, but your fence would be the weak point. And dinosaurs, luckily, I've, I've seen them chase my <laughs> my ranger vehicles through those gates, but they'll stop beforehand, so there's no... Uh, a gate is truly like how uh, a gate works in most RTS games, where if you build a castle and you have a gate, the enemies can't walk through it, even if you have the gate open, otherwise it's just a weird timing thing for AI. And this is definitely one of those games where, you know, if the uh, dinosaur didn't break down the wall, they can't just walk through it, and they can't walk through the gate. I've seen a lot of great animations for the dinosaurs, too. A lot of examples of dinosaurs um, kind of ripping apart animals while one picks it up, the other one does, too, and they kind of rip it in half and both eat it. Um, eat it whole, or half the whole, I guess. Eat it half. There you go. So there's plenty of that in this game, too. Uh, plenty of great animations for the dinos. Plenty of great interactions with each other. They're very sociable uh, to each other, and it's really nice to be able to see uh, of some improvements there a lot of uh, extra care being put into a lot more dinosaurs and of course we have our uh, lagoon dinosaurs and our aviary ones and more many more for the ground and it's kind of cool one thing i think i'd like to see here too is maybe more bugs and plant displays uh, there are definitely those little amenities that you can build but a lot of things are more like uh, you you put a building down and then designate it to be a enclosure of some sort and then that's about it um, and by that I mean like what it was in Planet Zoo is if you uh, built what would be known as an exhibit you could put like a dung beetle or a scorpion or tarantula in there and it was pretty easy to do there wasn't much you had to do to uh, to make them happy but the interaction there was more than here uh, for the dinosaurs for the most part in this game uh, you just provide the appropriate food, which in most cases is either uh, planting a bunch of trees and nuts and berries. Uh, and they'll eat directly from the actual uh, plants that you put in their paddock. Uh, or, if they're a carnivore, then of course they mostly enjoy the hunt. And there's a few that also eat fish, so you'll have to put in some uh, feeders that are in water. And they'll go into the water and kind of just eat those directly out of the cage as if they... Uh, we're fishing themselves. Well, in just a matter of uh, moments, we've got ourselves a pretty nice park, I must say. There's a lot more I want to add on. I'm getting ideas looking around. Some of the areas at the ends of the park, I think, are going to only be accessible with the monorail system. And it just seems to be way too far out there for people to walk all that way. Especially since this, is, th this map is kind of shaped like a candy wrapper. You've got the large... Uh, round area in the middle and then off to the side are like two triangles pointing towards the center and so the uh, kind of the edges are going to be difficult to get to there's choke points getting over there so if you're going to make some pathways it has to be right there and there's no other mode of transportation in the game aside from 
uh, the monorail that I've seen. Although I can remember Jurassic Park Genesis had a fantastic amount of extra abilities to go and see the park. You had, of course, your um, your park ride that had the, uh, <laughs> the 1993 iconic uh, Ford Explorers or whatever year it may have been for those. Uh, but then that game also had hot air balloons and um, I think there were also TVs where you could put cameras around the park and uh, people could watch dinosaurs live from wherever they were inside of the visitors center or inside of the uh, viewing area. So there's certainly a lot, certainly a lot of stuff that could be added to this. And I think that's more nitpicky and things that could be added to mods, but I don't know if that's going to be a thing. I'm not even sure if the original really had it. And with everything um, just coming out and not being released, there's really no time for mods. It will take some time for those to come out if they do, if they ever uh, give us access for something like that. Another thing to consider for the animals, too, for the uh, dinosaurs is that they like rocks. They like sand. They like dirt. It's not too picky, but uh, there is definitely a little... It's a sprinkling of Planet Zoo in here, a sprinkling of Planet Coaster, and uh, a sprinkling of the previous game. Well, a lot more of the previous game, but enough new here that uh, I think my favorite stuff is definitely the Chaos Theory mode. Uh, I think that's fantastic where, again, by the time you're starting to maybe lose interest in something like that, you remember or you complete a mission and remember that you can go on to another one on Restricted. So uh, the base campaign is kind of an on-rails experience with about six to eight missions. And the Chaos Theory mode has five that uh, definitely spend take you into a more experienced uh, part of the campaign. Uh, but are not as... Um, actually, I th I'd say that's probably the most difficult part because you're trying to run a park with pretty strict uh, restrictions as where challenge mode is more... Uh, sometimes the quests are laughable where they <laughs> they ask you to take a photo of, like, for example, a dinosaur and then you get just half a million dollars. So it's, it's pretty funny. When, whenever you need money, you definitely can get it in this game. And uh, there's not too many options for you to fail when... Uh, well... When you're, when you're starting to go bankrupt. Another thing, too, uh, that I've learned is not to scale up too quickly. Uh, we're building a hell of a lot of stuff here for the sandbox mode, but money, as you see down in the right corner, is unlimited. Um, in the challenge mode, you definitely want to start with herbivores. Start very small. Eventually build up your repertoire, your, your portfolio of dinosaurs and uh, you know all the, all the dinosaurs that you can build and then eventually expand out into carnivores. And so, kind of like how you've watched this progression, it's like this, but even smaller scale. Less buildings and a lot more paddocks, and that's a great way to generate funds. So I could I could definitely imagine myself, too, building this park in challenge mode, too. Sandbox just allows you to do it easier. All right, let's see how it turned out. All right, well, there we go. Most of the park is completed based on the fact that we don't have everything unlocked for the single player, which will have to be unlocked over time. Doing the campaigns and such will unlock things like the uh, vehicle tours and the monorail and whatnot from Jurassic World. But this, of course, being a little bit more Jurassic Park level stuff, but still, it looks absolutely fantastic. Looks like we have a few enclosures here then. Looks like uh, I made four in total. Maybe even uh, five could be made out of this. And now it is time to synthesize some dinosaurs. Now, cool thing here about the hatchery is that we can actually uh, release dinosaurs from the roof, too. So a helicopter can come and pick them up and transport them elsewhere. So we don't really need, like, a holding cage uh, in order to, you know, hold them here and then transport them somewhere else. I do kind of like having an initial, um, you know, release area where new dinosaurs can be kind of held before they're transported. But this will do. Let's go ahead and start to... Synthesizing some dinosaurs, then we better get started with uh, my favorite myself, the Velociraptor. We also have a, at the uh, very start here the Allosaurus, the Baryonyx, the uh, Carnotosaurus, the Stegosaurus, and the Triceratops available as well. Really cool stuff. So we've got, um, it looks like, uh, oh wow, actually, this is neat. We have uh, one, I guess, swimming dinosaur, water. Don't know if he can swim, but he eats fish. So he loves, loves water. And then, of course, uh, a couple of meat eaters that like to hunt. And the very famous herbivores, too. So we've got plenty of room for a few of these. We could even make the uh, Triceratops and Stegosaurus mixed together in the same enclosure. So that's pretty cool. Well, let's get started with our uh, wonderful uh, Velociraptor. Now, if we're going to do this, we'll have to go ahead and get some scientists as well. So we have no one available at the moment. So we'll go have to 
go ahead and have to hire some. Let's go ahead and see who we can get here. New recruits. We definitely want somebody who's very good at genetics. There we go. Yara here will be fantastic. We also want a good medical staff member. So just in case there's injury, we definitely want somebody that's like at uh, three if we can. There we go. Uh, John, go ahead and recruit him as well. There we go. That's a good start for now. And we'll go ahead and see if we can start making these dinos. So let's go to the Velociraptor. Assign. We won't modify the start, but eventually we can get into something like that. Motivated and genetic specialist. Cool. This will give us a better chance to succeed if we have multiple doctors who are good at the uh, synthesizing process. But we'll just go with the first for now. And let's unpause. And we'll make ourselves some dino DNA into some dino dinosaurs. Let's also go with some triceratops too and we'll synthesize. Oh, we can only do one at a time though. So we better get another doctor. Okay, let's go ahead and try that. So we're going to fill up our park. By the way, we can take a look at the map. So you can see, yes, we have one enclosure, two, three, four, uh, five, actually, as I mentioned. So uh, definitely an enclosure for some smaller dinosaurs here. Maybe uh, some small herbivores when we unlock them. A big old carnivore can go over there, and we can separate some herbivores and maybe even do our water dino over here somewhere, too. We can, you know, link the uh, water a little bit uh, wider and make it more of a wetlands for the dino. Very cool. We can also utilize some more space here, but of course... We can take a look at the map size and uh, see that we can pretty much only expand over to here. And we used most of the other areas. Some of it's kind of mountainous and weird to build in, but that'll be fine. I like it for now. All right, looks like our first dino is almost synthesized. All right, let's go ahead and select some eggs here. Let's see, we have insufficient skill to do that many. Uh, we need three out of five on the... Uh, Medical tab now. Okay, so now we need another doctor. So control room, doctor. Uh, let's go for new scientists. So we want ourselves to have another uh, higher welfare doctor. There we go. Barbara Rodriguez with the 5 out of 10. Very good, Barbara. Welcome aboard. That'll help us out. Okay, so let's go and add some more. Ah, so the skill doesn't actually uh, increase the more dinosaurs that you have. Cool. Well, let's go ahead and get uh, these dinos released, or at least uh, created. And let's start with... Uh... Oh, yes, we want our medical doctors there. I wonder if this will give us a higher chance if we go above requirements. Probably not. Might reduce the uh, amount of time needed. Now, these enclosures are also empty, so we, of course, got to put some more plants and such in them. And we can... Uh, basically, they're ready to be modified for any dinosaur that goes in there. So if we have ourselves a herbivore, we can modify it for that, or a carnivore, so on and so forth. Cool little uh, window here as well to observe. We can actually go inside the gallery too. So if we want to, we can stand right in here and see what everyone else does. Kind of cool that we're below the dinosaurs a bit, so that way when they walk past, we'll be able to kind of see them a little um, closer. Hopefully they come over here and get curious. We can put some food here and make it a nice feeding area. <laughs> That'd be kind of cool. All right. So dinosaurs are about a minute and 28 seconds away. In the meantime, we can go ahead and spruce up one of the cages for the raptors. I think we definitely don't want to put them in here. And uh, it would be kind of cool to put them in here. But this might be a better holding cage for them right here. Although there's never anything perfect for them. They'll jump the fences. They'll try to break through. If the power goes out, they'll be the first ones to try to uh, start testing the, uh, the defenses. Trying to delete a few trees there by the... Uh, habitat, but I guess not. So everywhere that has a dark path is a area for the uh, people to walk on for the public, and then these gray paths are kind of more staff only, or facility paths, which you can use for you know making small little inlets into the paddocks and uh, maybe some other secret paths to kind of bypass if you want to connect two areas together for staff, but not for the guests. That's a good way to do that. Oh, we have some really beautiful views here, though. Yeah, this will be really cool to see some dinosaurs walking around there. Now, we'll have to unlock some more fences. We have a lot more things to do for research. So, uh, when you first start the game, keep in mind that not even in the uh, unlimited mode, they still kind of want you to play through the campaign and such, which is totally fine because it does kind of serve as a tutorial for what to expect in the uh, other modes, challenge mode and sandbox mode when they come up. All right, there we go. 
Let's go ahead and release our dinosaurs into this cage for now. We can move them later if we want to. And here they come. Specialist in dinosaur behavior. I've formed a unique bond with the raptors. Now, don't be jealous. Aww. Everyone knows I have a soft spot for this dinosaur, the Velociraptor. And they get a bad rap as far as I'm concerned. But if you imprint early enough, you can make real connections with them. Other than Claire, raptors are the most intelligent partners I've ever had. And like her, they could kill me in the blink of an eye. <laughs> that's a that's a joke. Of course. Yeah, let's go ahead and place down some stuff for him. Okay, so we'll have to assign some rangers and take a look at what their comfort is and monitor them from time to time. Uh, they want a bit more open space. Oh, actually, they're oh that's right. They're establishing their territory by exploring the paddock. So you do need to wait a little bit of time for it to expand. Essentially, what the territory section is is within a large paddock. Uh, maybe the Stegosaurus will use one end and the Triceratops will use the other and they'll kind of establish the uh, territory. Sometimes it doesn't matter as much. Other times they're really picky about where they go. So you'll you'll see how it works here in some of the other missions and later in the game too. So we'll uh, probably hit our uh, open space goal for us. They definitely are not happy about prey they are. And area continuing to in increase as they explore a little bit more. So uh, an update is not provided right away on what they need. Kind of just have to monitor them for just a little while to see what they like and maybe what they dislike about their enclosure. Let's go ahead and do some force around the edge. They might be happy with that. There we go. That looks good. All right, let's take a look at them now. All right, the force is still increasing to 14. And it'll continue to increase as they recognize it in their territory, 15. Looks like the threshold will probably be about 20, maybe 25. And uh, other than that, they should be pretty happy. The area is a bit small, so we can also expand that too. We can, uh, you know, make an angle here for one of the edges of the enclosure. And just widen it up a little bit more. Some, something like this, for example. So minor adjustments can always be performed to uh, increase the happiness of the dinosaurs. Just make sure you don't delete that till that fence is ready. Knowing the raptors, they might try to sneak out at any moment. There we go. And then things will be updated, and we can continue to adjust. Right. So, raptors here. Let's say uh, maybe stegosaurus here and triceratops there. Uh, some smaller herbivores. And then the big old T-Rex can go in here as well. And I think that's pretty good for what uh, is our current sandbox situation. But, without everything unlocked in terms of facilities, I definitely want to be able to play more of that campaign. But overall, I think everything looks really nice. I think we did a fantastic job of decorating and setting things up. I still want there to be more options in this game for benches, garbage cans, banners, uh, rest areas, and uh, areas for people to go take photos and such. I really want it to be more and more Planet Coaster and uh, you know Planet Zoo with the options for pathing and for uh, pedestrians who are walking around to be able to go see more stuff more different designs for hotels, and more customization options that still need to be here. And hopefully we see those sometime soon in future updates and or in things that I have not yet unlocked. Well, anyway, everybody, that is it for our first look at the sandbox mode. We'll come back and manage some dinosaurs in our next episode. If you'd like to see more, make sure you go ahead and smash that like button and join me for our continuous live streams on Jurassic World Evolution 2. You have all been lovely, and I just want to welcome everybody to Jurassic Park. Thanks again for all the support. And I'll see you all next time. Enjoy the views as we say goodbye. Goodbye, everyone. I'll see you soon. Take care.